Okay, so just imagine this is a, a data set you're dealing with. You have two treatments, right? Because in our t-test formula, a limitation of this is that we can only test two treatments at a time, right? An X treatment and a Y treatment, right? These are just imaginary numbers that I made up, but it's gonna work for our purposes uh, as an example of moving through this test, calculating a t-test by hand specifically. And so the first thing you need to do when you're examining uh, a data set you have between your X and your Y treatment is you just need to eyeball them and see if there's any overlap between these two treatments. We've got an X, we have two, five, three, four. In Y treatment, we have one, seven, six, six. So there's not much overlap, but there is some between these two data points, between two and one, right? So we do, that means we do have to conduct some sort of test in order to figure out if these uh, two groups of numbers are, are statistically uh, different from one another. And by statistically different or, or statistically significantly different from one another, we mean that uh, there's a difference between these two treatments that's non-random, right? That there's actually some true trend in reality. Um, so, the first thing you gotta do is look at your t-formula, right? Um, the numerator here, this includes x-bar minus y-bar. What are those? Well, x-bar is just the mean of treatment x, right? x-bar is just a shorthand uh, expression for that. And I've already calculated that here. You could probably do this in your head. Uh, it's 3.5 for the mean of treatment x. y-bar is the mean of treatment y, and that is uh, 5. And then, uh, so the numerator is pretty straightforward, right? Um, the denominator is where things get a little bit more complicated. This is the square root of pooled variance, which is in its own formula down here, divided by uh, n sub x plus pooled variance again, divided by n sub y. What are n sub x and n sub y? n sub x is just the sample size of treatment x, right? One, two, three, four. Uh, same thing with n sub y. It's the sample size of treatment y. One, two, three, four data points. Okay, so n sub x and n sub y in this case are the same. They don't have to be. Uh, you can, the only limitation on the sample size for any uh, parametric statistical test of which the, of which our version of the t-test is a part is that you need, is that each treatment needs to at least have uh, two data points. Um, why? Because you need at least two data points in order to create means, in order to calculate means for each treatment, all right? So we're going to uh, work through this T formula a bit, and then to start, we're just going to use a different color here. So T equals the absolute value, start with the numerator. So you X bar is 3.5, right? Minus five. Pretty easy so far. Um, but when we get to the denominator, you have to calculate what pooled variance is. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. If you look at pooled variance, um, the variance is just measuring the variability of both data sets. And I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but let's break down the numerator first, because there's some uh, Greek expressions that uh, students may not be familiar with. This epsilon symbol here just means the summation of everything within this parentheses. X sub i just refers to each iteration or each individual data point of treatment x. And the same thing over here with uh, y sub i. So basically, since we have uh, uh, four data points in each treatment, in treatment x and treatment y, there are going to be uh, four different versions of this expression and four different, expre four different versions of this expression. So basically, we're gonna zoom out here and so this, this whole term is going to look like, um, uh, we're going to take e and each iteration of x and each iteration of y and take the difference of each data point from their respective means. So starting with treatment x, we're going to go 2 minus 3.5, that whole expression squared, plus what's our next iteration? 5, all right? 5 minus 3.5 squared. I'm just going to come back down here. Um, 3 minus 3.5 squared plus, what's our last iteration of treatment x? Four minus 3.5 squared. Now I gotta do the same thing again with the, uh, the y treatment. So let's take another color here. So and this is going to be, what's our iteration? One minus five squared, because again, remember, uh, y bar is five, plus seven, minus five squared plus six minus five squared plus six again minus five squared. Okay, so this is the most complicated 
uh, work intensive part of this whole summation, right? We're just having you calculate um, this by hand so you can understand the actual mathematics behind this. So you're not just mindlessly plugging these numbers into Excel or R or any other statistical program and just having the program spit out a number to you inexplicably, okay? So that's the whole uh, numerator of treatment X. I'll, I'll do that in a calculator here in a second just to make sure I don't uh, make any careless errors and I'll write up in the next uh, video section. Um, the denominator of pool variance formula is much simpler. Uh, if we note, we're just using n sub x and n sub y again. So again, I'll use a different color here. Denominator of the pooled variance formula is 4 minus 1 plus 4 minus 1, which of course is going to equal uh, 3 plus 3, which equals 6. All right. Now, pay attention to this denominator because this is also the expression n sub x minus 1 plus n sub y minus 1. It's also equal to your degrees of freedom. Okay. Put that over in there. Or you could just say DF for short. And we're going to come back to that in a second. But please note that the degrees of freedom is essentially a, a uh, it's taking into account the sample size of both your treatments, right? And that'll come into, uh, that'll be important when we start to calculate the actual uh, probability values and, and ultimate statistical significance of the difference between these two treatments. Okay? All right, and then we'll, be, we'll continue in the next session.